In case you have yet to see this today, this is just absolutely remarkable footage here because it shows, as you're about to see, Bo Bergdahl being transferred Saturday from the Taliban to the U.S. military. Uh, and as we watch this, Chris Heben is a former Navy SEAL. He's joining me now to walk me through um, what we're looking at. And so as we watch this, Chris, I, I want to begin with the, 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 really the first visual we have. Um, I think our, one of our, my last guests called uh, him being in his Sunday best here because the Taliban knew full well they had a video camera and they knew this would be blasted all around the world. But, but the prime time, prime time, but the eye blinking, the Bo Bergdahl sitting in that truck initially and blinking, blinking, blinking. You're, you're a medical professional as well. What's your read? Yeah, he is very nervous. He doesn't know what he's walking into. You know, when you're a captive for five years, a little bit of that Stockholm syndrome comes into play. Well, a lot of the Stockholm syndrome. He, he didn't know what he was being handed over to. Yes, they were Americans, but I think he knows in his hearts of hearts that, that, is, that he walked away from that post and he's mm. like, geez, what's going to happen to me when I get to the other side? I think he was very nervous. He might have been in shock at the, 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 the fast pace that, that this all happened. So uneasy, edgy, nervous frightened, mm -hmm. you know, identifies more with his captors after five years than he does with the guys that, uh, that wear the same uniform he used to wear. So crazy. Hard, crazy. hard to say, you know, and, and how quickly and how well orchestrated the whole thing went off, um, at least from, from my own perspective, but yeah, clockwork. And, and though the fact is we watch some of the U.S. Um, special forces, you see them sort of facing the Taliban as they walk back toward the helicopter before turning around two different times. You see some of those guys patting Bo Bergdahl down. What, yes. what, what would you have taken a little longer with him? I would have taken a, a lot longer. Um, you know, people say, hey, you want to get off the X? But, you know, you've got two AC-130 gunships circling in the sky. You've got armed men on that helicopter that are scanning left, scanning right, what we call looking for work, which basically means you're, you're looking to squeeze the trigger on someone because they're doing something you don't like. Hmm. I would have had that guy, I would have slammed him down on the ground, checked every inch of his body front, back, and sideways before I put him anywhere near that helicopter. That's what we do with friendly pilots that we know have been in the field for two hours, three hours after their plane went down. Let alone we search the their entire body. Right. But right, I don't trust the Taliban. We like to, and, and yeah, we never turn our backs to the enemies. We like to look our enemies in, in their faces. So that video was very, it was very impressive. Things what about, went down fast. What about quickly, just Chris, the hand shaking, the hand over, over the heart, and then the left hand wave? Yeah, the, the hand over the heart, that was a gesture that should have been done with the right hand. You're basically saying salam, which is peace be, peace be upon you. This is a peaceful situation. We, we want no gunplay. We're showing our open hands. The left handed waving, that's worse than a fashion faux pas. That is like a. It's bad. It's a slap in the face. It's, it's almost akin to giving a one finger salute or telling someone you know what. You know, with that's, the left hand. Okay, so that's a Exactly. No -no. Whether that's done by design or they just didn't realize in the heat of the moment, I'm not sure, but, you know, not good. But, but who cares? Right. I mean, it all went <laughs> off and we, they have Bo Bergdahl sitting in lunch till uh, exactly. health and, and the number one priority. Final takeaway what else am I missing? What else am I not seeing? Well, here's what we're, we're basically seeing everything. I'm glad he's back. OK, but let's get to the facts of the case and see what happened. Why did he even leave? Where did he get? How did he get to where he was? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and also my, my last parting comment is let's go get that Marine Sergeant in Mexico. Let's bring him home too. Hmm. Chris Heben, thank you so much, former Navy SEAL, for joining me. I really appreciate it and your expertise.